Okay, so that uh, that did not quite go according to plan. First and foremost, this game gets off to a shaky start for the Mavericks here because less than two minutes into the game, they lose Luka Doncic to a very ugly-looking ankle sprain. Uh, we were able to confirm it is just an ankle sprain. Nothing is broken. The x-rays came back negative, so that is very good news for the Mavericks and for Maverick fans. We don't know yet the grade of the sprain. We're not going to know that until probably an MRI on, I'm guessing, Monday. That'll give us an idea of it. Plus, you got to give it like a day or so to kind of see the state of the ankle, see how much it swells up. But we got to determine if it's a grade one, two, or three sprain. Given how flatly his ankle rolled and touched the court, like it was pretty much the side of his ankle touching the court, it seems likely he's going to miss a fairly extended period of time. And this is a just gauntlet stretch for the Mavericks to have to go through. This is going to be, it was already going to be a tough stretch. And now without Luka, presumably without Luka, I should say, I don't know factually, definitively, I should say at this point that he's out for an extended period, but it's just going to be that much more formidable. Now, in the game itself, the Mavericks fall behind in the first half by as many as 24 points. They're down 23 at half. I mean, the whole, as you can guess, the whole arena and I actually see now it was 122, 118, not 121, whatever. The The whole arena goes pretty much deathly silent in this case as the... You know, as Luca goes out with the injury, and the team looked really sluggish. There you go, fixed it. Team looked really sluggish as a result, and it was just a matter of. It, it felt like this team was going to be hard pressed to contend with a top five team in the Eastern Conference. Miami came in shooting, I think, about thirty seven percent as a team from three. That is third best in the league. Miami in this game ends up, you know, the game, the game ends up being a lot closer than the first half seemed to indicate. Miami was hitting everything in the first half. They were shooting over 60% from three. I want to say they were like 12 of 17 shooting threes in the first half, well over 50% from the field. And it just looked like it was setting up to be a disaster for Dallas as they trailed 73 to 50 at the break. But the guys kept fighting. They kept fighting. Porzingis hits a big shot uh, before, you know, at the quarter break there. Uh, at the end of the first quarter, that kind of gave him a little bit of life. It was that pretty much half-court shot where Mavericks inbound it, flip it to him at just inside half-court, feet on the logo, and he knocks down the three. So they got some plays like that, but the big thing for this game where it turned on its head was the third quarter as the Mavericks basically came in and they outscored him by 13 in the quarter. They held Miami defensively, held them in check, I think they held them to 6 of 25 shooting in the quarter after, again, they were 50-something percent from the field in the first first half and 60% from three. They were like 1 of 10 from three in the third quarter, and the Mavericks outscored them 31 to 18 in the period, allowing them to cut the lead to 10 going into the fourth quarter. And the Mavericks had ample opportunities to win this. Like, they rallied. Tim Hardaway Jr. hit some crazy ridiculous shots in this game. He is the high point man with 28. He's still he's still making a lot of big plays for this team, and he's making some crazy shots. A lot of guys stepped up. KP had some brilliance in this game as well. Also, some missed opportunity there. And uh, as I'm going down the list here, and now I bring up missed opportunity, this was not a, a good game for Jalen Brunson in the clutch. It looked like he became kind of the central figure for Dallas in crunch time there at the end of regulation and in overtime. And yeah, he hit one one big three, and he had a great backdoor pass to Maxi that drew a foul, but he missed a lot of shots. And I understand it was physical. Uh, he missed a lot of shots, though. He had a couple turnovers. Butler ripped some once. And it just, you know, even in overtime, the chance to force double OT, he misses the three there, gets a great look, and just misses it. So I understand he's got championship pedigree, but he had a rough game. He misses and he misses in late in the regulation a beautiful backdoor find from KP and he's so wide open your thinking is okay it's at least it, it's an open layup. You see the Miami defender flash across his face you're thinking okay maybe it's an A1 and oh my god he missed that. Now to KP's credit or rather uh criticism 
um, call out, whatever you want to call it. Uh, KP later on pulled a Patrick Ewing where he pump faked to the top of the key, drove the lane and tried to finger roll it and knocked it off the back iron and missed it when it, he should have gone in and tried to dunk it or just taken some different approach than what he did. Dallas left a lot of points on the floor in the crunch moments of this game. They rallied all the way back, erased a 24-point deficit, took a four-point lead several different times in this game in regulation and in overtime, and they just couldn't build on it. They couldn't stop Miami, and it was just bad mistakes, man. It, it would be a moment where Dallas is up four with possession, and then Brunson gets stripped, and Miami hits a three going the other way. Or Brunson just loses the ball at one point to, uh, about the free throw line. I don't know if he's thinking KP's coming around and he's trying to feed him or what, but loses the ball and, you know, Miami's going the other way with it. And then even even at the very end of the game in overtime, Miami's up 119 to 118. And you got Jimmy Butler, who's an 80-something percent free throw shooter at the line. He misses both. But Dallas fails to secure the the rebound. Like, you got exactly what you needed. You had six seconds left. That was everything you needed, but you just failed to execute in that moment. And that I understand Luka in these big moments is your guy. He is the orchestrator uh, who makes all of this work. The team showed a lot of heart and a lot of fight. I don't want to completely tear everyone down because... They could have laid down and gotten, you know, the the doors blown off of the double AC as Miami just ran them off their own floor after the Luca thing. The crowd went dead silent. Luca limped back, wouldn't even put any weight on the ankle as he limped to the back. And you had as well with uh with the players. I mean, they looked shaken by it. And it's good that it's not a bad a bad injury, but when those clutch moments came in, even though the broadcast team for the Mavericks was saying, you know, hey, Jalen Brunson, two-time NCAA champion, uh, national, you know, AP player of the year. Like, he he knows, he knows these moments. He thrives in the, dude, he, he crumbled. He hit the 1-3, but he had multiple turnovers in the final two minutes, if we're talking about regulation or overtime. And he missed several shots, several right at the rim. Now, in his last drive, before Butler goes to the line to shoot the two free throws and misses, there's a lot of contact there. And I think a, a foul should have been called. And it's hilarious to me now that, you know, I, I, and I don't want to tic tac foul, don't get me wrong. But it's hilarious where you have people who say, like, you don't call a foul in that situation. I seem to remember losing an NBA Finals because Dwayne Wade got phantom fouls in those situations, let alone tic-tac fouls to put him on the line, even when it was a one-point game with three seconds left. Like, it's good if you're gonna say if you're gonna go a little bit more the other way, where you're gonna say, "Hey, it's got to be pretty egregious." But Miami, and in particular Butler, got away with a lot of contact in the game uh, in those moments. But you know what, Dallas, you got to play through it. You got to make it work, and you got to play through it. Um, something else to call out to just cause a couple people brought it up. This is Brad Townsend confirming this on Twitter. Um, and this is not at all a, a thing to focus on. Obviously Luca's health is the biggest thing. And then, you know, talking about the team's game here and their comeback and all that. But for those wondering, yes, the Luca 20 points, five assists, five rebound streak does officially end tonight after 20 consecutive games. He played two minutes Two points, one board, left with an injury. It ends the streak. Like, it it sucks to have it end that way, but uh, that is that's just how it works. He checked into the game, and so anything, no matter the circumstances, any reason he would have to come out of the game was going to end that streak. So it is what it is. Um, let's see here if there's anything else I want to call out. Maxi, I thought, had a really good game. 17 points for him as well and uh he was knocking down he knocked down a couple threes some big shots there some good rim defense as well with a block three three assists three rebounds i need the rebound numbers up maxi i i do i you know i i was critical of kp coming in this year 
And at, through the first week of the season, not rebounding very well, KP is doing a much better job rebounding the ball now. Maxi is just not a guy that rebounds. And I understand he does a lot of other little things right, but that that's a that's a problem for me when uh when you're gonna play a guy thirty minutes and he's gonna give you three boards yet he's a center for you. Uh, Seth Curry, a little bit of home home night, nineteen minutes, six points, so he cooled way off after his thirty point outing against the Pistons. Berea, a spark off the bench again, thirteen minutes, twelve points, two rebounds, five assists on five of eleven shooting. 2 of 5 from 3. He helped keep this team going in that first half as well um, when things were not looking great. So shout out to him. I thought Finney Smith played some good defense in this game, you know, having to deal with Butler and all that. Um, this, is a, this is a disappointing one to lose. DeLon Wright came back from injury as well. He played 9 minutes, recorded 2 rebounds, 2 assists, only attempted 1 shot. He also got a steal. He had missed a couple games with... Uh, I had initially heard it was a strained abductor muscle, but I heard someone else say groin on the broadcast. So whichever it is, as I accidentally throw my pen, whichever it is, um, he returned small, small sample size for him tonight. Not a huge impact, but good to get him out there because they're going to really need him, especially if they're without Luca for a little bit. Jimmy Butler played 43 minutes, 27 points, four boards, seven assists, but he only shot eight of 22. Like, not crazy bad percentage, but certainly not great. You know, he didn't control the game or anything like that. One of six from three. That's the thing, too, that helped Dallas in that third quarter. Miami stopped passing the ball. They, the ball movement completely died out. Miami started dribbling the ball in place a lot, going one-on-one a lot. And Jimmy Butler, even late in regulation, was just settling for a lot of threes. Like, Miami took a timeout. They had the ball with 10 seconds left, and Jimmy Butler... Out of a timeout where you inbound the ball at half court then, Jimmy Butler just stood in place near half court, dribbling the ball with Dodo on him for about seven seconds, dribbled twice towards a three-point line and pulled up for three. The guy was one for four shooting. He He's struggled a little bit in that regard. Like, I, I just couldn't help but think, like, you, you, you called a timeout for that? Like, I understand you did it to move the ball to move the ball to half court, not full court. I get that. But you had a timeout, and that's the best thing you could come up with. Okay. And you had those opportunities. Dallas had so many opportunities to close the door on this, but they could never quite get over the hump. They would always fail to execute or fail to finish a play, whether it was missing uh, eight points at the rim. Even in the first play of overtime, KP... Great aggressive move. Pump fake drives to the basket. Tries to throw it down. He's fouled on the play, but he misses the dunk. It rattles out of the rim. And then he splits the free throws. So instead of three points, you walk away with one. Like, between Jalen Brunson missed layups, just talking in the final two minutes of regulation, and then the end of this game. Uh, the Excuse me, the end of overtime, the final two minutes there. You probably had eight points left on the board just from Brunson shots within four feet of the rim uh kp left two on the board there had his finger roll again so another four i mean it's it's not even counting the turnovers dallas just left so much out on the floor here it this is where they just really missed luca they need someone else to feed off of i don't think it made sense i understand again the pedigree of brunson and the experience I think they went to the wrong guy in that moment. I think Hardaway Jr. Uh, might have been a better call. And yes, I say this as someone who is a staunch critic. And as he's continued to thrive in a starting role for the most part, I'm looking more and more in the uh, wrong category on that front. But we'll see. Regardless, uh, I, I didn't I didn't agree with continuing to go to Brunson even late in overtime after his struggles uh, I had felt throughout that. So it is what it is. That's what we wound up with. Uh, for the Heat, uh, you had Kendrick Nunn. That's who Luca sprained his foot on driving within uh, the first minute, 40 seconds or so of the game. Uh, he had himself a pretty nice game, 13 points, six boards. Um, he got real physical as well with some other guys. There, there was a couple moments where he and Brunson were going back and forth and where they crashed into each other trying to save a ball out of bounds and were jawing a little bit. 
Uh, but for Miami, their big man, um, Abadeo, Abadeo, probably butchering that again. Forgive me. First time hearing some of these um, more foreign names throws me. Uh, so he plays 38 minutes, 18 points, 11 boards, 10 assists. He's got two triple doubles in the last three games. Miami improves to 5 and 0 on the season in overtime games. Uh, it wasn't like the Hawks game where they went on like a 16 0 run to open overtime in that case. But all the same, it was a it was a beating for sure. Um, Dallas Dallas had these opportunities, man. This is a frustrating one to lose because you know how hard it's going to be to win without Luka. And even though the team was sluggish and it took until after the halftime break to really regain their composure a little bit, you felt like this is one they needed to steal because you're going to ride on that emotional high a little bit of rallying around it. Whereas now after this disappointment, it's going to be a little, just that extra little bit harder to really, uh, you know, circle the wagons and get things back on track then because now you're going to have to go to Milwaukee and the Bucks have won 18 straight. 18 straight. They're, I think, 24 and 3. It's them and the Lakers at the top of the NBA right now. And the Bucks are just on an absurd tear. I think they won double digit again tonight. I can't remember who they were playing, but they were they were winning by 20 something points. I think it was Cleveland um in the fourth quarter of that game. So yeah, this is uh this is gonna be a real task for Dallas. This is a brutal stretch coming up. We've we were kind of warning about this, and I've also warned, hey, you know, you see here, I believe we're now, I'm going to verify it here, but uh, fourth in the Western Conference at this point. Actually, you know what? I'm still showing, at the moment, I'm still showing third. So disregard that there. I'm actually showing third in the Western Conference. For the moment, it's still not quite the end of the night. There's still some games going, but uh, that's something to consider as well because the separation between three and like 10 11 12 even is not that crazy in the west like it, it's pretty jumbled up in that regard so the mavericks are five and a half back of the lakers you can go all the way down to i mean yeah even if you go to the thunder who are the eight seed right now you're talking i mean there's six games i guess between them so there's a little bit but this is a brutal five-game stretch, and now game one, minute two of that game, you're suddenly without your 20-year-old MVP candidate. It's going to be tough sledding. So don't uh, don't take it for granted. We, we're going to have to see how the team can hold up. General game stats here. Dallas outshot Miami from the field 45% to 43. Miami outshot Dallas from three percentage-wise 40% to 39%. Considering the fact that Miami was 12 of 17, I believe, in the first half, they ended 16 of 40. That sucks to not be able to reverse that tide because they were still in love with the three-point shot, but it did not treat them nearly as nicely uh, in the second half. Tyler Hero had a big game, though, for them, 19 points, and he had, a, he had a dagger during one of those big swings because of a Brunson sloppy turnover when Dallas had a four-point lead and the ball turnover three the other way. Just total kick in the dick. Uh, free throws were huge in this game. Miami doubled up Dallas at the foul line. 34 attempts compared to 17. Miami made 82% overall, 28 of 34. Dallas, meanwhile, 11 of 17 for 65%. That's your difference maker. Not just the free throws at the end by Jimmy. I know he missed a couple even. But uh, that's your difference maker. You just had... you. Miami got to the line and you know, paid off on it. Dallas, the few times that the handful of times they got there, they didn't cash in on those opportunities. And that's the story of the game. Dallas, 11 turnovers in the game. Great. Still below their season average, but again, only forcing eight Dallas does not force a lot of turnovers. They have a good defense. They have a good, not great defense. They've shown themselves very capable of playing good team defense. That's great. Uh, I think Dodo is a very good perimeter defender, and they've got some other guys. KP has been very good for them defensively this year overall. They've got a lot of guys doing things like that, but they got to find a way to f force more turnovers. That's something that I think hurts them. Dallas out-assisted Miami 30-27. to 
Miami out-rebounded Dallas 49-48, but Dallas got more offensive glass 8-5. Three blocks apiece, eight steals for Miami. Eight. Mm. Four for Dallas. Dallas commits nearly 10 more fouls, 27 compared to 18. Yeah. So that's how this uh that's how this shakes out here. So it's a it's a tough emotional game to lose. You hate to lose the game. And obviously the bigger storyline and how it's going to impact now this next stretch of the next week plus is going to be okay. Let's wait and see what we hear on Luca. Let's see how he's doing. And uh, let's see if this team, in the meantime, can hold up without him. I don't think they're a terrible team without him, but they are decidedly less uh, less equipped to deal with some of these elite teams. And so you'd be hard-pressed to win a bunch of games without him regardless, but during this stretch, who knows? We'll see. That's going to do it for my time, though, guys. I'm DDP. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment below, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect, and until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Salute.